CME Info's continuing education and board certification programs bring the conference to you. The following is a video sample from the University of California, San Francisco School of Medicine's Advances in ID, New Directions for Primary Care. This excerpt is from course director, Dr. Brian Schwartz's lecture titled, Urinary Tract Infections. So we'll start off as a 65-year-old diabetic woman who comes to your clinic for routine evaluation. She's been feeling well, um, a urinalysis and culture are sent for unclear reasons, but they were. She had a white blood cell count of zero, no red blood cells, and had some proteinuria. Uh, the next day you're called by the microbiology lab because her culture has greater than 100,000 Klebsiella pneumoniae. What would you recommend for this patient? Would you recommend no antibiotics? Uh, would you start her on ciprofloxacin while you're waiting susceptibilities of the Klebsiella? Would you repeat the culture in one week, and if the bacteria is still present at that time, then decide to treat with antibiotics? You should go ahead and vote. Okay, so almost 60% of you decided that antibiotics are not indicated in this case. About a third of you would give empiric cipro and a handful would repeat cultures in a week. I'm not gonna tell you my answer just yet. Let's change the situation a little bit and, and then we'll talk about uh, how you'd manage that. Okay, so modified case. 65-year-old diabetic woman comes to clinic routine evaluation. She's feeling well. A urinalysis and culture are sent for unclear reasons again. Now she's got greater than 100 white blood cells per high-powered field, no red blood cells, some protein, lab calls you because the next day it grows greater than 100,000 Klebsiella pneumoniae. Would you manage this patient any differently? Antibiotic, no antibiotics, empiric Cipro while you're waiting cultures, or repeat the culture in a week, and if bacteria is still present, then treat. Let's go ahead and vote. Okay, so this, so the, the, it looks like the presence of white blood cells in the urinalysis have kind of swayed quite a few of you to think that treatment uh, would be indicated empirically, opposed to, I think the majority did not give antibiotics before. All right, let's do this one, let's do one more scenario, and then we'll discuss them all. 65-year-old diabetic, comes to your clinic, this time she complains of dysuria and frequency. And you send a urinalysis and a urine culture appropriately. Uh, she has uh, pyuria, a little bit of protein, and she has greater than 100,000 Klebsiella and pneumonia in her uh, urine culture. How would you manage this case? No antibiotics, Cipro, or repeat a culture in a week. If bacteria is still present, then treat. Okay, so now nearly all of you in the setting of pyuria and symptoms you would treat. And I, I definitely think that's the correct answer. The argument that I'm gonna to try to make to you now is that in the first case, you had asymptomatic bacteria without pyuria, and that's not something that you need to treat in most patients, and we'll talk about what groups you might consider doing that. And the second question, it was asymptomatic with bacteria with pyuria, and that did not, in my mind, does not change how I would look at the case, and I would not treat that patient either. The third case is somebody who clearly has cystitis, and that's an indication for antibiotic therapy. And let's go over some of the data to support that. So you know, when you think about bacteria and the urinary tract, it's kind of a spectrum of disease, which asymptomatic bacteria is very common, but we see people with cystitis, pyelonephritis, uh, perinephric abscesses and urosepsis. Although you may have asymptomatic bacteria, it does not mean that you need to necessarily progress to any of these other stages. So what is the definition of asymptomatic bacteria? So it's somebody who has no signs and symptoms of a urinary tract infection, who either has avoided specimen with 10 to the fifth colony forming units of, per ml of bacteria, or a catheter specimen that has at least 10 to the second. A point I want to make, and that's why I bolded and put a star next to it, is pyuria is frequently present in the setting of asymptomatic bacteria, and it should not change how you think about the case. And this is um, uh, from a uh, clinical infectious diseases uh, paper looking at many different, kind of summarizing many different papers on asymptomatic bacteria and showing the frequency in different populations. You can see it's least frequent in premenopausal women, but does exist, uh, a little bit higher in pregnant women, and then when you move into groups like diabetics, you can see diabetic women, almost a quarter of them can have asymptomatic bacteria. Elderly patients, even higher. Those with spinal cord injuries 
can have it in almost 90% of cases. Those who make urine who are undergoing hemodialysis, about a third of them. And then the point I, I love to show is that long-term catheterization use, which is considered about a week, almost 100% of people have, have uh, asymptomatic bacteria in those cases. So this is a very common phenomenon in many populations. Top quality board certification reviews and continuing education programs, guaranteed. For more information about this self-study activity, go to www.cmeinfo.com 782V or call us at 1-800-284-8433.